Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to do a video based on a question I got from a subscriber. They wanted to know how to use Packer to build a Windows server and then manage it with Ansible. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, so it's a custom Windows 2019 AMI image using Packer in AWS. And then once we've built that, we're then going to use Ansible to configure it. I'm not going to combine the two. There is um, an Ansible plugin, I think, that HashiCorp provide. But this is just going to be straight Packer and then straight Ansible. And whatever you want to do in between is entirely up to you. This is just going to give you the base for you to go uh, ahead and build whatever you want to build. Right, so today I'm going to assume that you've already installed Packer. If you haven't, I've got a video on it. Just follow those two links down below. Um, I'm also assuming that you've already obtained your AWS access and secret key and you know how to use them in a Linux environment. If you don't, again, follow my videos. These links will be in the comments, uh, in the section underneath the video so just have a look at that um, what we're going to do today we're going to create the required packer file we're going to create the AMI image we're going to build the Windows server from a new AMI just a straight AWS console from the image <clears throat> then we're going to log into test the credentials that we've created we're going to open the firewall for HTTP not HTTPS as it says there I'll update that and then we're going to test WinPing to make sure that we've got connectivity and then we're going to run a test playbook in Ansible and this is basically like a very quick way of customizing a server a Windows server um, I, I, it always seems like Windows was kind of left behind Linux kind of took ev all the good stuff and now Windows is slowly catching up so if, if, if you're using it because you're a Windows admin then I hope it helps and you know drop a like subscribe copy um copy the link and stick it on linkedin and then you know maybe we can get a few other people doing this right so i've done a github repo this link again is going to be in the description it links to the code so i'm going to spend a bit of time talking about the code and then i'm just going to clone i've already cloned the repo then just clone the repo and, and get going so it's all based on this link this packer link on the hashicore learn website so here there's a load of stuff i'm not going to read it out i'll go through it i, I might mention some of the choice items if it's relevant um, but they basically go through and take exactly what you need to do it's not difficult um, I've made some changes for my environment and you might need to do the same for yours um, there's some warnings here about certain communication in HTTP you know it's not particularly secure um, it tells you what files you need to create and then it goes into the packet code um, about how we're going to build it and they've got a few variables in there with some PowerShell provisioning environment variables and stuff which is cool um, the AWS secret and access key I'm already assuming you know how to do that and then we're going to launch it. it takes about somewhere between five and eight minutes depending on the region and then I'll also show at the end how to delete it all because they don't mention that here but that might be useful okay so the first thing we're going to do well the first thing you're going to do is clone the code so Clone the repo, details are here, cd into the directory, the Windows Packer build directory. Mine's slightly different because it's the, it's the actual place it came from. Um, and the first thing we're going to go and do, um, all the code that they want you to create is in this directory. It's in the Packer code to build Windows directory. And if we run a Packer, I actually made some changes before this. So so if it, if it doesn't validate, I'll have to fix it quickly. <laughs> so Packer validate and then the directory and then the Windows 2019 Packer HDL file. Let's see what it says. If it's clean, right, okay, so we can't find the bootstrap.txt file. Ah, right, I need to be in the directory. So it was a good, so CD into the Packer build directory, rerun the Packer validate, taking off the directory this time. It's basically just looking in the same directory, and if it can't find it, then it tells you that it's a problem. So we've got the validate back. This is cool because you might do the same and not understand what the problem is. You know, so we, we hit these problems, we get through them, and we move on. Right, so we've validated it. Now we're just going to build it. In fact, before we build it, let me um, just show you some of the stuff I've done. So in the file, um, this is my region. You can change it and customize it to yours. Um, it's taking the HashiCorp Amazon plug in there and I've given it my names it's a t2 micro you can make it whatever size you want t3 micro t2 medium 2xl you know you've got the choice you, you, you'll know what, what you want um, this is the bit where you tell it what you actually want now they do provide names of other so in their example I think they use a 2012 I mean that's pretty old already 
and at the bottom they do tell you that you can use a 2008 SB2 or a 2016. I know that 2019 has been out a while, 2000, uh, 2022, I'm not a Windows admin, I'm sure there's another name for it. You know, they say whatever they say and this is where you put it. So you can look it up if, if, if you're not using this. I suspect that 22 would just be 22 there instead of 19. Um, this is where we actually bootstrap it with the password the username and password so that it's administrator and it's this password I've kept it the same so you, it's one less change to make if you're using their code and then they've used the provisioner to create some variables and you'll see these when it runs you'll see them get get pushed out so you, you can kind of see how you can interact and how you can add more things into the packet code right so I'm just going to come straight out of here so now we're going to CD oh no, we're going to stay in this directory because it's going to need the files and we're going to do build so packet build and then that file. So this will take somewhere between five and eight minutes. So I'm gonna let it run through. Obviously you'll see my head moving really, really quickly because I'm gonna speed this up when I do my editing. Um, and I'm just gonna wait here and see what happens. So if we go onto the Packer Build image page, um, we can see that they do give some of the output here and that's pretty much it. So here it took five minutes, 30 seconds. I'm building in EU Central 1, so if we come to the AWS console, EU Central 1 is in Frankfurt, and the only reason I picked Frankfurt was because I've got a few other EC2 images in other, in other regions, and I just didn't want to, you know, confuse you with other AMI e images when you're looking at my EC2 dashboard. So once we've created it, we'll, we'll see it there. So it might actually pop in. Yeah, so this is it building the AMI based off of the Packer file that we've just put in, we've just run. So that what that will do is that will build an AMI image, and it once it's finished, it will pop it in this in, in images and AMI, and it will also create a snapshot. So at the moment we don't have any of these, and once they're created, you'll see them. So I'm going to go into quiet mode, and I'm going to sit here and wait for it to happen. And we're back. Right, so what it's done, you can see here that from the very beginning, it went through, did very similar to the HashiCore Learn web page. We did get an error here. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it did move on. I'll have, a, I'll see if I can find out what that is and stick it in the comments after the video. Um, so the machine was restarted, it carried on. It, you can see some of the, um, you can see here where it said, hello, new user, like use back ticks, escapes when using characters such as dollar. You know, it goes through some of these, um, that's in the code to give you the example of using variables uh, in the provisioner and we can see that it's finished It actually took 14 minutes. I don't know why it took so long. <laughs> that seems like it was an eternity um, We've now got an AMI image here um, Which is great um, So what we're going to do if you were going to be using Ansible or another mechanism or even Terraform to build your servers, you would then take this AMI image and you go and add it into the code but what I'm going to do be is quickly just show you where the instance is so we can see the instance has been terminated that it used to create the image and then we can see that we've got an AMI that's been created here called Packer Windows Demo and it's got day and time on it which is great um, we, it also creates a snapshot which is here so it's a 30 gig snapshot um, this is all part of the process so when you create your own AMI image you get an AMI image and a snapshot of that image which you have to pay for it's not very expensive um, so let's go back to AMIs and we're going to use this AMI that we've just created. So does the number tally up? So it ends 6E6, 6E6, like it's got our name, so we know it's ours. So let's launch instance for AMI. Now, if you're using Terraform, you put the AMI into that, or if you're going to use Ansible to do a build, you can put it to that. But for purposes of just building it quickly, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Windows Packer. I'm going to give it I'm going to keep everything identical. So we're here, we can even change from a 22 micro to something else. I'm going to give it just Frankfurt PEM key. All that is, is to decrypt the encrypted password if you don't know what it is, but we know what it is because we've set it with Packer. I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to launch the instance. That will take a few minutes. So let's click to view all instances. There it is, it's currently pending. So this is our Windows server. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is log, once it's up and running, I'm going to log into it with the username and password. And you can get those for us in the packet directory. Oh, no, I'm in the packet directory. Um, I think it's the bootstrap win.txt. If you scroll up, you can see here that the password is here and the administrator is there. I think it's also in um, the Windows packet HDL file here. So you have the win rm password, win rm username. And these are the ones that we can then use to log in. They're the ones that get set. But you can obviously change that to whatever you want. So let's check. So it says it's running and initializing. So what I'm going to do is get the public DNS, come into my server or my PC, and open up remote desktop. Change this. Obviously, I've done a few demos before. So change that to the new one. Show options. We're going to add in the username, administrator. Hopefully, I spelt that right. Let's connect. It's going to ask me for the password which is this I'm not going to remember me because I'm going to delete this afterwards it's okay so yep it's accepted the password it's bringing up let's make it a bit smaller so it's bringing this up now so this we've just created this it's our username and password it's now our Windows server so if you add anything else you want into that bootstrap um, it's pretty much PowerShell scripts so if you look at the bootstrap Text. This is pretty much PowerShell, so it's setting WinRM to HTTP transport layer. You can change that, and it, you know if you know more about Windows than I do, and don't have to be hard to do that, you can change this. You can even install OpenSSH instead, and then connect over port 22. Um, you can add in installing other packages and running other services. That's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, this demo is just HTTP because it keeps it very close to what Ashgore showed you, so you can. It's very easy to follow it. There's no encryption, um, but it, it, it. Once you've got it, you can build on it yourself. Okay, so the server's now logged in. <clears throat> I'm just going to bring up a couple of things because I'm going to run Ansible on this in a moment. So we we'll just go to this PC. Right, so there are our directories. Right, I'm going to come back to this. So if we go back to our Packer demo GitHub page. We've created the Packer image, and we've built the Windows Server in the AMI. We've we've logged in to test the credentials, and now we need to open the firewall for HTTP, not HTTPS. So we come back to AWS. Um, sorry, the console. I find it, which is here, and we need to go into security. That's the security group. So I'm not going to add a new group in. I'm just going to edit the inbound rules. So I'm going to add a new rule. You can just start writing HTTP. And there it is, WinRM HTTP. Custom is just from anywhere. It's only going to be up for a few minutes. Then save that rule. That will take a moment to apply. And what's next? And then we're going to test the wing ping. So let's scroll down. Excuse me, I've got an itchy eye now. Um, yeah, so here. So we need to give it the information. So. I'm going to go back to the instance. I'm going to get the um, details and the IP address. And in here, go back, go up one directory. So we can see that this is, again, the, the main directory of the Git clone. And I've got a windows.yaml file here. So if I vi windows.yaml, um, you can see here that this is what I'm going to run in a minute. But before I do that, it's vi the hosts.ini file. So this has got all of the configuration you need to run. So that was a previous server in testing. So let me just, you, you can use the IP address, you can use the public DNS name, whatever you want. So we see here that we've set up the administrator user, we've given it the password. I'll show you how to encrypt this and store this safely in, in other videos. So just check out my channel. There's loads of stuff on there. This is the port we're going to use, WinRM, that's the scheme. And then just a couple of extra variables here, values here. So let's just save this. So we're going to save that, and we should be able to just run wing ping, win ping. So let's just copy this. Let's hope this works. <laughs> so we've set up the firewall. We've allowed communication through on that port. So this should get a pong back, and it'll be green. Here we go. Yes, ping pong. Love it. Right, now we know we've got connectivity. 
we can run the rest of the Ansible stuff. So that's that successful. Run the playbook against it. So let's have a quick look at what the playbook's going to do. So it's a really basic playbook. It's going to um, run against WinHost, which is in my host.ini file. It's going to create a temporary folder under the C drive temp. It's going to create a foo.txt file within that folder. It's then going to create a Ginger2 template with the name of the server in based on a Ansible hostname value that's in you can see in setup. Um, it's part of the Ginger2 template. Then we're going to do a quick checksum on foo.txt. So you'll see the output to the screen. Then we're going to run a, a PowerShell get host. We're going to and then we're going to display the get host output to the screen, which would be loads of information about the server. Um, then we're going to add another directory called C drive Ansible examples. We're going to download the Apache installer into it. So this is from Apache's website into that directory. And then we're going to run do an install the MSI and Apache is going to get installed. It's brilliant. So lots of different things happening. So again, just cut and paste straight out of here. And hopefully this will connect. It will start to do all those things that are listed in that playbook. Now this is a very basic example. You, you can do what you want with this. Once you've got connectivity, once you've got the access, you're free. You're free to do whatever you want to do. This is just a basic, does it work? Yes. Okay. So let's go to our Windows server. So it's here. So it says it's created. Yes. Yeah, so we can see that the temp file has popped in, temp directory. Let's have a look at that. We've got a folder. We've got foo.txt. Let's have a look in there. And yeah, this is our server name. So it's using Ansible underscore hostname fact from that. Lovely. Right. So it's now downloading the Apache installer. So where was that? That was in C drive. So let's come back here. C drive. Ansible examples, so we can see it downloading the Windows installer. So it's done that, it's now doing the install, and it's done. So if we come into here, and I write Apache in, it's there. So we can, I mean, I don't know what it'll do, I don't know very much about Windows at all, but this is, this is us now configuring our Windows server with Ansible. It's done everything it said it was gonna do. Um, I just want to share a couple of other things with you before we go. So you can change the image, change any of those variables. It's totally up to you. Try and extend it. Maybe you try and install OpenSSH in PowerShell um, and then connect through port 22. I've got a video on that. If you want to check out my page, it's one of, the, one of my more popular ones. Um, you can update the variables in here. Oh, dot any, you know, it looks like I've got a video here that I'll give you the link to, um, you know, install other things you know try and try out a few different things or your use case what you need to do it for and then I'm going to remove the resources so we've proved it works let us just delete it from AWS okay so I don't need this anymore I'm just going to terminate this nice yeah big, big black triangle and then I'm going to go once that's deleted I can go into the AMI and we can deregister the AMI. So do you register AMI? Yes, please. If something's using it, it won't let you, I don't think. And then we come down to snapshots and we say, yes, I would like to delete the snapshot, please. There we go. Right. We've cleaned up. There's nothing left. This server now won't connect to anything because there's nothing there and the server's dropped off. I've got no um, remote desktop connection anymore. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it makes some sense. I hope it makes some sense to you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you like the video, share it on LinkedIn or one of the other social media channels and let other people know. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.